Kia ora koutou. Uh, welcome everyone to our webinar for uh, the Gateway to New Brighton Pages Road Bridge and Surrounding Streets Project. Uh, my name is Crystal Anderson. I am an engagement advisor here at Council um, and your host for this webinar. Thank you all for taking the time to join us online tonight. Um, a bit of an agenda uh, you'll see on screen what we'll be covering today, but before we get into the content, I'll first introduce you to the team behind the screen and let you know how you can participate during the session. I'll then hand over to the team who will run you through a brief overview of the Gateway to New Brighton. Today you'll be hearing from Nathan, who is our project manager, uh, Peter, who's our design manager, and Emma, who is our landscape architect. We also have Aviva working hard behind the scenes to keep the session running smoothly. Your mics and cameras are switched off so that we can keep the session moving, uh, but you can ask questions in the Microsoft Teams chat, which is located in the top menu bar as a speech bubble. If you're not able to use this function, you can email questions through to us at letstalk at ccc.govt.nz. We'll answer questions at the end of this session, but feel free to ask them throughout. If you're hard of hearing or you're experiencing sound issues, you can turn on live captions. Just click on the three small dots above the more function at the top of your screen and turn on live captions near the bottom of the drop down list. One last thing from me, hopefully the banner came up to let you know that the session is being recorded. This recording will be shared on our YouTube channel in the next few days, and you'll receive a link via email on how to access this. I'll now hand over to Nathan to start the presentation. Thank you, Crystal, for the introduction. As the project manager for this project, I would like to say thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy lives to see this webinar, and thank you for the interest of this project. We are really excited to share the project and the scheme design with you today. You will see my mouse pointer um, run around the screen, and that is, I'll be indicating what to look at as the presenter is speaking. A good place to start off is the background of the bridge. Essentially, Pages Road Bridge is the centre point of the project and why we are doing all this work. So the the red pin on the left picture shows Pages Road Bridge. So Pages Road Bridge is the bridge as you go into New Brighton. It has a palm tree in the centre of the roundabout there. This is New Brighton as shown on the screen with New Brighton Pier to the right. To the left of the picture is the CBD. Towards the CBD, I should say. The right picture is Pages Road Bridge, the existing one. There is over the Avon River. So a bit of details around the bridge. It was opened in 1931, so that makes it about 90 years old now. It is a lifeline bridge and a key evacuation route for New Brighton. So a lifeline bridge, I'll just explain a bit about that. A lifeline bridge means it is a primary route for evacuation for New Brighton. Also, it carries utilities that are key for New Brighton suburb, and that, that includes wastewater, water supply, power and comms, and these are big utilities too. The bridge had short-term emergency repairs after the 2011 earthquake, so the short-term emergency repairs were done by the Skirt Alliance, and those short-term emergency repairs were deemed to last 10 years. So they were done in 2015 with essentially, that means that they, they, will, they will last until 2025. Now, they don't necessarily expire. They will, um, um, at the end of the at 2025, the bridge is due for replacement. It's just like a, a house designed for 50 years. So the bridge is deemed to be at the end of its residual life now. Um, yeah, thank you. So the project objectives. This is why we need the project, and this is what the project will achieve. Before I go into the project objectives one by one, I will talk to the pictures on the right. So the top picture on the right is the 
the, the existing bridge straight after the 2011 earthquakes. We, you can see there's a, a hump in the road. So the bridge structure is off to the left and the approach is down to the, the right. And the reason why this has happened is because it's due to lateral spreading. And the picture on the right is the um, aerial photo of the existing bridge in that five leg roundabout. That five leg roundabout has all sorts of deficiencies with it that we are trying to remove as part of this project. So the first project objective is to have a resilient bridge replacement. Easier said than done, we just build a new bridge. So that's that, that, that's that's an easy one to achieve there. Also, we want to restore the level of service for vehicle access to pre-earthquake. So what that means is that currently the bridge, as it the existing bridge as it stands, has a 30 km an hour speed limit for heavy vehicles. This is to prevent further damage. Now, if we build a new bridge, awesome, we're, we're, we've achieved that. We also want to improve the pedestrian connectivity and the cycling access. So that roundabout is an image in the bottom right hand corner. There's a lot of issues with that roundabout and for people that have gone through it as a pedestrian or cyclist, you would, you would have experienced that. We also want to address the existing vertical and horizontal road profile deficiencies. So where that is getting to is the roundabout it's very hard to have a clear sight line. That's because the bridges are at a high level and you can't see over it. And also the sight lines throughout the round, roundabout is, is far from ideal. And these aren't essentially compliant to the new standards we have today. We also want to improve the emergency evacuation efficiency and capacity across Pages Road Bridge. So this is something that I held dear to myself um, and I held the project team um, um, to get a good design that will achieve this. And we do have a solution that we have proactively tried to find the most efficient way that people can evacuate out of New Brighton through the intersection and across the bridge. And you'll see that in the scheme design. Now I'll pass you over to Pete Lavelle, who will talk you through the scheme design. Thanks, Nathan. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, so now I'll talk you through the road design changes and upgrades uh, that are proposed. Uh, so the, the map you see in front of you um, shows an overview of the draft scheme design. Um, so really just to help get your bearings. So this is uh, Pages Road along here. Um, this is the new bridge over the River Evan. Um, uh, this is Seaview Road, got Hawk Street and Keys Road. So New Brighton or Brighton Mall and New Brighton Pier and Beach, they're off the screen to your right hand side. Um, as we can't see much of the detail on this map, I'll zoom into each street. So we look at the detail, uh, look at the design in a bit more detail. Um, so to start with, I'll look, uh, we'll look at the core of the project, which is the bridge, the new intersection and pages road, which is in this kind of red rectangular area. Uh, then we'll look at Seaview and uh, Hardy Street in the yellow rectangle. And then finally, we'll look at Rosen Street and Pratt Street in that orange uh, rectangle up the top. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so this is the core of the scheme design. Um, so we have a new bridge alignment um, immediately to the north, immediately north of the existing bridge. Uh, by building the bridge offline, we'll be able to minimise the disruption to traffic during construction, um, as the existing bridge will, will be able to keep that operational. And then the traffic switched um, across to the new bridge towards the end. Uh, once the new bridge is built, the existing bridge and that five leg roundabout that will be removed. The existing roundabout area um, that's there at the moment. That's gonna we're gonna develop that into a nice park area, uh, pocket park is what we're calling it, and we'll keep that iconic palm tree as a focal point in that park. 
um, there will be a new signalized T intersection, intersection connecting Seaview Road with Hawke Street. Um, the signalized T intersection that's been selected based on both the road safety and also developing the most uh, effective evacuation solution for the New Brighton area. Uh, this is a real key pinch point in the evacuation in the evacuation route, getting people um, out uh, and onto the bridge and away down Pages Road. Uh, to make this uh, evacuation route as efficient as possible, we need to disconnect Owls Terrace and New Brighton Road from the intersection. This means that Owls Terrace traffic will be rerouted onto Hardy Street and Seaview Road to get to the intersection, and New Brighton Road traffic will be rerouted onto Rosa Street and Keys Road to continue on into New Brighton. Um, we'll add a second westbound lane um, from uh, through the T intersection to increase ca traffic capacity during an evacuation event. Um, that second lane will go through the intersection across the bridge and extend along Pages Road all the way to Anzac Drive intersection. So when we've incorporated all of these changes, this will improve evacuation times by 40 minutes. The next slide, please. Um, so these images on the slide are artist impressions of what each area might look like that we've just spoken about. Um, the new bridge is on the top left. Uh, on the top right, we have the new intersection with the traffic lights. The bottom left, you'll see the existing palm tree that will be retained and protected in that new pocket park. Um, and on the bottom right, it shows what Pages Road uh, could look like as you're approaching the new bridge heading towards New Brighton. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so this section of the scheme design shows Pages Road. Um, as Nathan mentioned, Pages Road still has undulating carriageway and curbs that are damaged since back in 2011 earthquakes. Um, so this section of Pages Road needs to be fully rebuilt and relined into the new bridge. Looking at what the cross section of the of the new Pages Road will look like, we will have two westbound lanes, uh, or sorry, we'll have one eastbound lane heading towards New Brighton. There'll be two westbound lanes uh, to the city, and that, as I mentioned, is to increase capacity in the event of an evacuation. Um, so native trees and plants on each side of the road and Bahutukawa trees will be planted down the middle of the road. Um, so this is going to help create that kind of gateway feel and uplift um, on the entrance to New Brighton, but it also has some road safety reasons. Um, so this is quite a straight section of road and uh, these trees will help create uh, what we call side friction, which will help influence lower traffic speeds compared to if it was just left as a wide open space. Um, it, al it also influences birds uh, flying between the proposed wetlands, which are on, going to be on either side of Pages Road, helps them to, uh, it influences them to fly at a higher and safer level over the road and traffic. Um, each side of the road will have, um, if we go back to the previous slide, please. Um, each side of the road will have uh, on-road cycle lanes and there will also be a footpath on either side of the road. The footpath on the northern side will be four metres wide uh, to facilitate both walking and cycling, and this will extend uh, up to and across the bridge to the new signalised intersection. Um, the project uh, uh, interfaces with quite a few uh, neighbouring projects uh, in this area. There's two red zone uh, development projects, uh, which are kind of wetlands, the Waitaki and uh, Bexley wetlands on either side of Pages Road. So down near the Anzac Drive intersection, uh, there's some parking facilities that are going to be planned in the Waitaki area, um, which this project will facilitate access to. Uh, so when there's uh, recreation and walking tracks developed within that area, uh, there'll be a car park uh, to provide access. Um, the city to sea pathway, which will be one of those paths that come through that area, uh, is going to tie in up near the bridge. Um, between the bridge and Anzac Drive, uh, there will be two uh, pedestrian crossing points. Uh, 
one up uh, near the bridge and another down uh, uh, where Nathan is pointing now. Um, along here, we got some bus stops. Um, so the two existing bus stops near Anzac Drive intersection, they'll be retained um, in their current locations. There are two bus stops that are located about halfway between Anzac Drive and the bridge, and uh, we're proposing to remove these entirely. Um, as with the uh, red zone area, they're, they're no longer really serving a purpose. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so again, this is an artist impression of what uh, Pages Road might look like. This is approaching the bridge. You'll see the wide shared path on the left, the two lanes uh, out, and uh, the Pahutikawa which trees down the middle. Uh, next slide, please. So this map uh, shows CV Road and the changes proposed there. Um, so as we discussed earlier, we need to. Uh, uh, we propose a new T intersection with traffic lights to connect CV Road with Hawk Street. So the traffic lights is the location where we can get uh, where we can safely get pedestrians and cyclists traveling along the new shared path or coming from the paths along the new Brighton Road across Hawke Street. Um, the proposed design for Seaview Road includes continuing that shared path from the new intersection along the north side of Seaview Road past the intersection with Hardy Street. This provides the most direct route for pedestrians and cyclists traveling to the center of uh, Brighton Mall. Um, to achieve this within the space available along that road, we've chosen to retain the existing well-established trees along the north side of the street and place the new shared path uh, on the roadside of the trees, um, which will remove some existing road space. So CV Road will be resurfaced and a section of no stopping will be marked along the north side of the road between the new traffic signals and the intersection with Hardy Street. Um, the two bus stops on CV Road, uh, they'll be retained. Uh, the one on the north side of the street will be relocated slightly to the east of its current location and will have new benches and tactile pavers installed. Some uh, on-street parking will be available on the south side of the street as shown. Uh, next slide, please. So this map of Hardy Street um, has been rotated um, to fit visibly on the screen. Um, so to get your bearings, uh, this is Seaview Road along the left-hand side with Beresford Street and Collingwood intersections in the middle and Owls Terrace on the right-hand side of the screen. The most efficient way to get traffic out of New Brighton area is to reroute Owls Terrace traffic onto Hardy Street and then give priority to Hardy Street and Seaview traffic into that new intersection with traffic lights. To achieve this, we propose to cul-de-sac Owls Terrace at the Hardy Street intersection and change the priority of the intersections along Hardy Street. For improved sa safety, each of these intersections along Hardy Street will have raised safety platforms to slow traffic and make it safer for pedestrians to cross the road. Uh, we also propose to introduce some curb buildouts and new planting or street trees um, along the route for road safety and to give the street a lift uh, aesthetically. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so here again are some artist impressions of what Seaview Road and Hardy Street might look like. Uh, next slide, please. So this um, this map shows you Rosa Street, Pratt Street, and uh, the connection at New Brighton Road. So as mentioned, New Brighton Road also needs to be disconnected from Hawk Street to obtain the most efficient evacuation solution for traffic going through the new intersection. New Brighton Road traffic will be rerouted onto Rosa Street to connect with Keys Road as that uh, onward connection to New Brighton. Um, Rosen Street itself will be upgraded mostly, upgraded mostly uh, road safety improvements 
um, especially improving the Rosen, Pratt and Keys intersection. Um, but Rolston Street will also have race safety platforms included as, uh, to slow traffic coming in to each of the uh, tight corners. Pratt Street uh, will become a cul-de-sac. This is going to enable space for resilient flood protection measures along the river and also to enable some stormwater facilities to prevent flooding. And that will be upgraded again with some street trees and planting. Next slide, please. Um, again, here's a couple of images of Rosen Street and Pratt Street. Um, the, let's see Pratt Street with the cul-de-sac at the end, uh, mid-block along Rosen Street on the top, and then down the bottom is the that disconnection of uh, New Brighton Road onto Rosen Street which maintains a uh, walking and cycling connection onto New Brighton Road. So at least uh, you'll still be able to walk and cycle along the river and connect into the new traffic uh, signals at the CV Hawks uh, intersection. So that's a, an overview of the road scheme design. I'll pass you over to Emma, who will discuss the proposed uh, landscape design philosophy now. Kia ora koutou. my name's Emma, I'm the Project Landscape Architect. Um, today I'll be talking you through some of the key drivers and objectives for the landscape design. So firstly, we've uh, looked at enhancing a sense of arrival into New Brighton, and we've done this two ways. So firstly, through planting, and secondly, through artwork. So as you're arriving down Pages Road, each side of the road will be lined with the coastal forest, and this will be made up of a plant palette that ties into the adjacent future wetlands. And as Pete described, they will also help with narrowing the road, creating a slower zone, and also helping with um, bird life flyover. Down the centre of the median, we've proposed Pahutakawa trees, which are an iconic coastal and very recognisable tree that will celebrate your entrance to uh, the coastal environment of New Brighton. Although they're not native to the South Island, they are suitable for the saline soils and the coastal conditions of this area. Secondly, artwork. So we have designated space on the east side of the bridge, on either side of Pages Road, for future artwork to be included. We're hoping that this artwork will provide a gateway into New Brighton and um, help with that sense of arrival. Um, the artwork will be developed in collaboration with Mana Whenua and it will be done during the detailed design phase of this project. There is also opportunity for artwork to be included in some of the built landscape features, so bridge handrails and paving patterns or site furniture. Our next key objective was to provide opportunities for observation and connection to the natural environment. So the pocket park will have a lookout, which is in the exact location of the current existing old bridge. So this is a bit of a nod to the recent history of the area, but also provides an awesome location for people to view across the river and into the future wetlands. Users can stand on the lookout and look in all directions down Seaview Road um, towards the pier and that will help with that connection into New Brighton, leading us on to the next key objective for improving pedestrian and cyclist safety, connectivity and access to New Brighton. Walking and, walking and cycling facilities have been will be improved with a shared path that comes down Pages Road and continues down Seaview Road into New Brighton Mall. And these clear direct lines and built features strengthened by the avenues of trees 
hope to form a visual connection from the river to the pier. We'll also be providing and maintain, ma maintaining connections for pedestrians and cyclists to continue using the existing paths along the river. And we anticipate that future adjacent projects will contribute to an increase in pedestrians and cyclists in the area. And we'll be working closely with these project teams to provide cohesive connections throughout the Otakaro Avon River Corridor. Our next design objective was regeneration of native ecosystems, biodiversity, and habitat for native wildlife. So the plant strategy will support the local biodiversity and add vibrancy to New Brighton. And we'll work this out with our nursery and operational staff who will help us to create a plant palette that is suitable for the coastal exposed conditions and sandy soils of New Brighton. The plant palette will be very key along the river in creating plants that create shade and increase that habitat for regeneration of native ecosystems and biodiversity. Finally, health and well-being benefits from creating a greener environment. Now with over 100 proposed new street trees, there will be a significant increase in the canopy cover, which will not only benefit the environment by cooling the streets, but also to the health and well-being of residents and visitors new to New Brighton by creating a more pleasant and desirable public space to spend time in. So I'll hand you back to Nathan now, who will discuss the next steps of this project. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. I'll now talk you through the next steps of the project. So um, first of all, we'll just rewind a month. So we went out to early engagement in June and July, and this was with the directly affected residents and businesses of this project. We also discussed with key transport stakeholders the project and also key community stakeholders. We are now out for formal consultation for the month of August, and this webinar is part of that. More details on public consultation is on the website where you have signed up to this webinar. We will also, after the formal consultation, we will then collect all the feedback in preparation for the hearings. However, while we're collating all that feedback and analysing it, we'll be updating the scheme design. The scheme design has been advanced for the road and landscape aspects in order to be able to get this consultation out to the public for them to have to say, for you guys to have your say. The road and landscape aspects We'll take your feedback and we'll update that scheme design. However, there is still a lot more design work that needs to be done below the ground, and this will take some time. This includes utilities such as power and comms, and also stormwater, wastewater, water supply, bridge, geotech, and consents. These all need to be progressed. And we do have some major utilities, as mentioned, they are going over the bridge that need to be, we need to figure out and resolve. If there is lots of public submissions, then we'll have a hearings instead of a deputation, and that'll be held later this year. This will then be followed by a council decision. Now, the council decision will be if we progress to the next stage based on the scheme design that we present them at the time that will include your feedback. So the detailed design phase, we this includes a number of things. This includes the detailed design of all aspects of the project, um, as I've mentioned um, previously in the scheme. But also we need to go out and resolve our consenting. So we have resource consents to get. We have to analyse some contaminated land in the area. We also need to, the consenting will be about working in the river as well. We have ecology to resolve and also got stormwater. We've also got archaeology, we've got tram 
oh, historic tram tracks underneath Pages Road that we need to resolve. And also we need to have um, various discussions with Manawa Whenua as we work in the Otakura Avon River. We also have a small bit of land that needs to be purchased. Now, this is unused land, um, so it's not affecting any residents as such in the area. We have to procure um, a contractor to be able to build what we're proposing as well. And also we need to obtain Wakatahi funding. So CCC or Cross City Council are seeking funding from Wakatahi. Wakatahi are central government, the transport agency. There is much more that happens behind the scenes, but that gives you a flavour for what will be happening in the detailed design phase. Construction is planned to start in 2026 and it will take around two years. Now, please bear in mind, this is if everything goes well, we get through the hearings, et cetera, at council, and we get the funding. So um, just bear that in mind as well. Also want to draw your attention down to the bottom of the screen. So there's a disclaimer there in terms of funding. So to make all the changes that we're proposing in this consultation, we do require additional funding that allocation of the additional funding will need to be considered as part of the 2434 long term plan at City Council. Now, what the long term plan is, is it's crushed City Council's plan and their spending in the next 10 years, what projects are going to get prioritised, how much is going to be spent, what facilities, etc., maintenance they're going to do. So it's their spending in the next 10 years for those that didn't know. We're going to um, finish this presentation, but um, we want to finish it with a fly through. So please sit back and enjoy it. Now, the team have worked really hard to get this ready for consultation. There's um, lots of work there that happened behind the scenes. And it is a really, really good summary of the project. It brings the design alive and it gives you a feel for what the project's about. It will take approximately three and a half minutes um, to go through. And after the fly through, We'll have some questions at the end, so um, and we'll be able to answer them. So feel free to pop your questions into the chat, and we'll get those answered. Cool. Over to the fly through. Enjoy. Check out the proposed changes for the gateway to New Brighton, Pages Road Bridge, and surrounding streets. To improve everyday and emergency access, we're building a new bridge slightly north of the existing Pages Road Bridge. We're renewing Pages Road from Anzac Drive to the new bridge to create a gateway that celebrates New Brighton. One lane in and two lanes out of New Brighton will significantly improve the traffic flow after large events or if needed in an emergency evacuation. On-road cycle lanes are added to each side of the road with a new footpath on the south and a four metre wide path for walking and cycling on the north side of the road. Native trees and plants will be planted on both sides as well as Pahutakawa trees down the newly created median to create a gateway to New Brighton. The new bridge over the Otakaro Avon River will be more resilient to future earthquakes and climate change. The roundabout on the New Brighton end of the bridge is no longer efficient or safe for all road users. An intersection with traffic lights and a raised safety platform will make it much safer for everyone. To create this, New Brighton Road and Owls Terrace will no longer be connected to the intersection. Traffic modelling shows that closing these roads along with the other changes will make the area's emergency evacuation time about 40 minutes faster. We're aware that many people love the palm tree in the middle of the roundabout, and we plan to keep it as a feature in a new pocket park, which will also have landscaping and paths for walking and cycling. With Owls Terrace closed north of Beresford Street, residents will have access via Beresford and Collingwood Streets. A new shared access way from the Owls Beresford corner will provide walking and cycling access from the new pocket park and bridge to the paths along the river. Seaview Road will be resurfaced and the 4 metre wide path along Pages Road will continue as a 3 metre wide path for walking and cycling towards the Brighton Mall. To allow for this walking and cycling path, and to keep the well established trees, we'll put in a no stopping area on the north side of Seaview Road from Hawk to Hardy Streets. Hardy Street will need to be upgraded as the main connection for traffic coming from Owls Terrace to Seaview Road. This will include a new road surface and street trees. We're upgrading Hardy Street as we'll be closing a small section of Owls Terrace to improve the emergency evacuation of the area. 
all intersections along hardy street will have raised safety platforms to slow traffic to a thirty km ah per hour speed limit making it much safer for people using the pedestrian crossings to improve safety owls terrace will become a cul-de-sac at hardy street owls terrace will be accessed via beresford and collingwood streets a small section of new brighton road will be closed to vehicles between rawson street and pages road with access remaining for pedestrians and cyclists this will improve evacuation times Rawson Street will be upgraded with intersection improvements and raised safety platforms to slow traffic around the tight corners. The road will be resurfaced, trees added and 10 minute parking provided outside Beachcomber Dairy. The intersection of Keys Road, Rawson Street and Pratt Street will be made safer. Pratt Street will become a cul-de-sac and will be upgraded, including a new road surface and street trees. Let's cordial about the gateway to New Brighton. Head online to letstalk.cc.govt.nz forward slash pages road bridge. Awesome. Um, thanks heaps to, to Nathan, Pete and Emma for their presentations. Um, hopefully that gives you a little bit of a uh, more of an idea on the, the Gateway to New Brighton project. Um, so we've now got some time for some questions and we have had quite a large number come through in the chat and via email. Um, so I'll just start by saying that we probably won't get to answer all questions tonight, um, but we will make sure that we answer all questions in writing. So that'll be emailed out to you um, probably early next week. Um, the other thing I'd like to say is unfortunately our lead um, engineer for the project has COVID um, and was not able to be with us tonight. So there's some questions that I will skip over um, because he will have the answers for those. So we'll get those answers to you as soon as we can. Um, okay, so the first question we've got here is, um, has the route for the commuter major cycle route in the east been decided? Um, and how will this be integrated into this bridge work? Yep, um, so I can answer that. So the Avon Patakaro major cycle route, route has not been decided. Um, there is some route options um, that have been developed technically, but they have not been presented to council. Um, so we have factored those in um, and where necessary the major cycle route can connect in. Essentially they all want be wanting to use Pages Road Bridge to get over the Avon River. I think that's to the question, Christian. Cool, thank you. Uh, sorry, just looking through the other questions. Um, Will the um, will Owls Terrace and New Brighton Road have formal cycling paths built, um, i.e. wider than there currently is on the top of the stop banks? So I um, um, missed that. Um, so can you repeat that again? So will Owls Terrace and New Brighton Road have formal cycling paths built? Um, so, for example, um, wider than what's currently there on the top of the um, current stop banks, temporary stop banks. Yeah, so part of this project does not in include that. Um, so there is out of our scope, then when they come around to modifying those stop banks, part of the flood protection measures they'll be doing, they will definitely be considering the, how those um, cycle connections are. There will be the city to sea pathway, which we um, as we showed you in the design, and that we definitely will be connecting in, and, and that will be um, a good facility. Pete, do you want to talk about the connections maybe we're providing to the rest of the room? Um, so ultimately, we're not uh, getting rid of any connections. So if you're biking or walking along New Brighton Road or Owls Terrace, you will still be able to um, connect at the intersection and have a safe crossing point. The traffic signals will cater for both pedestrians and cyclists, so cyclists will have those um, um, detector loops with the triangles on the pavement that will activate the lights uh, for them. Um, and then obviously we mentioned earlier there are a number of other projects um, that need to progress along the river, so there are both uh, uh, flood prevention 
uh, stuff like type projects uh, as well as flood management projects that will need to be progressed. They're separate to this project. Um, we coordinate with those teams to make sure our designs are uh, coordinated and uh, we're not doing anything that uh, might prevent what they need to do in the future. Cool. Thank you, Pete. Um, the next question is about buses um, and there's a couple of parts to it, so I might ask them um, separately. Um, so how will buses and cyclists be separated? And I think this is specifically in reference to CV Road. Um, uh, they've said I'd prefer to cycle along CV Road with lowered speed limit and shadows to New Brighton Mall um, and have buses down Hawke and Beresford Street. Have the bus routes been discussed with bus passengers, bus drivers and ECAN? Uh, the bus routes, um, both the bus routes and the bus stops locations um, in relation to the project has been discussed with ECAN and uh, there's some minor changes. So as I mentioned, there's just one bus that we're retaining the bus stops on Seaview, Hawke Street and uh, at Anzac Drive on Pages Road, we're removing to mid block along Pages Road. Um, at the moment, it is proposed for a shared path along Seaview um, rather than cycling on the road. Uh, there is uh, limited space. Um, there will be limited space along Pages Road or along Seaview Road, I mean. Um, the bus routes will not be changed. So the two bus routes, number five, and number 60, that uh, travel in the area, um, there's no change proposed as part of this project uh, to those routes. Great, thank you. And the second part to that question was, um, will bus priority measures be installed along Pages Road? Yeah, I can answer that. We don't have the congestion needs to bus priority down Pages Road, i.e. the bus can still go through the first phase of lights, etc. and the congestion um, is not warrantable for bus priority. And also, um, if we put a bus lane in, it could confuse people if they're allowed to use it in the back of all righty. Uh, next question is, will there be cycle lanes over the new bridge? Um, and if yes, will they be physically separated? Um, the uh, cycle lanes across the new bridge, there is both on-road cycle lanes and an off-road four meter wide shared paths, which can be shared with, by walking and cycling. Um, the on-road paths are not proposed to be physically separated. Um, there will be adjacent space um, adjacent to the traffic lanes. Um, could we just flick through the inter into the intersection slide, I think, Aviva, that would help explain it? Slide. Right, cool. And maybe a couple of slides, please. Yeah, perfect. So that's the um, off road cycle facility across the bridge that he was referring to. With on road, for people that are confident to be on the road, there's on road cycle lanes there and there. Um, if we go to the, the uh, artist impression of Pages Road, mm, there's a good one. Might be uh, a little bit more visible. We, can we go back? Yeah, that one on the bottom bottom right there, there's the cycle lane off the road where the cyclist is on it. There's also a cycle lane on the road. Well, for the people that are confident. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> uh, cool. So um, we have a, another question around um, the flooding that currently occurs um, on mm -hmm. Pages Road. Um, and I think this question is about um, whether council will be doing any work to fix that prior to this project being constructed in 2026. So um, this project team unfortunately doesn't have the answer to that question um, because we are focusing on the um, the Gateway to New Brighton project, but we will uh, endeavour to find out whether there is um, an answer for that question and, and come back to you in writing on that one. Mm. 
yeah, we can find um, them to the appropriate people soon. Cool. Um, and then we have uh, another question around whether residents in the immediate vicinity have been consulted separately regarding um, this project and the loss of their parking, or are they only learning about it now? So I can confirm that we've definitely um, consulted with the residents uh, in the directly affected area. Um, so over the last few weeks, um, they have been door knocked by our team um, and if they weren't around at the time we've we've left consultation materials with them um, and they're welcome to get in touch with us if they'd like to have a, a chat about any of the changes that are proposed they can also provide a submission history as well yeah absolutely um, so definitely encourage everyone to let us know uh, how they feel about the project um, and provide details around what things they'd like to see uh, changed or tweaked. Um, it's all really important information. Um, just having a look at the next question. So uh, in an emergency evacuation, uh, how will the traffic calming measure, measures affect evacuation times, i.e. Um, is traffic still limited to be 30 kilometres in the event of evacuation? Yeah, I can answer that. So the congestion in the streets means you won't be going any more than 30 kilometres an hour. You will not be travelling 50 kilometres an hour. It's, it's too, the congestion is too great. I think that's a pretty simple answer. So the traffic calming measures makes no effect to that. Thanks, Nathan. Um, and I think perhaps our last question um, it says, I like the plan, um, but why does this take so long in comparison to, say, the Ferrymead Bridge, which has been in for almost 10 years? So why has it taken, I think it's the question is, why has it taken so long from the earthquake to now, I think? Would that be the question? Perhaps, yeah. So... <laughs> The skirt oh, alliance. he's just typing, so we could probably okay. wait for um, a clarification. Also, why so long? Oh, okay. also, so why so long until construction, I guess? Yeah, so I think there's two parts of that question. So until now, um, it has been, you know, it's been, say, 10 years, um, which is what he's referring to. Um, and that is... The reason why the hype behind that is because the Skirt Alliance had picked that up, the the, the earthquake damage in Christchurch region. Um, unfortunately, there were um, the bridge did not get replaced during the Skirt Alliance, and it was passed to City Council, and it was picked up by City Council recently, and we've been progressing the scheme design. Now I can tell you that the Skirt Alliance would not have been um, rerouting the traffic as we are. They were just disconnected. And also they didn't provide that tsunami. This tsunami evacuation wasn't considered during their design aspects. So they just couldn't get the construction funding from that Skirt Alliance. So City Council have picked that up now. Um, also, why so long now? Um, I think I've pretty much covered that because you know there is two years to go but there's also a significant amount of details that we need to refine and go for our detailed design phase um, until construction and that does take time it's not we can't if we got to get it we got to get all those details right for construction great Thanks, Nathan. I know there's um, been impatience from the community, but it's good to go. And I'll, yeah, yeah, thanks, Patrick. I know it's yeah, it's it it's beyond the control. Um, when I was assigned it, I we've been accepted, trying to do what we can to get this up and running as fast as possible. I know there's impatience. It's been a while, and all I can do is apologise on behalf of City Council for it. Okay, looks like that might be um, the last of our questions. Um, There's also one more question that I'd like to answer, Crystal. Um, it was oh, sure. The top oh, of the I missed screen, one. Which, yeah, it was really easy to miss. Um, it was combined with another one. So there was a question about has the costs of removing contaminated soil where the bridge is intended to go been factored into the cost of construction? 
So there is a pile of contaminated soil that has been um, that has been put there, um, and the bridge will not be going in that location. Um, it'll be sitting between the existing bridge and that new pile. However, where the bridge is going, um, there is an old timber mill, and we are planning to not disturb that material and build on top of that, if that makes sense. Um, we have factored a, a risk figure in there as well, because we're still going, we're in the early, early stages of design. So part of this scheme design and detail design, we will be looking in more into that contaminated land. So in short, yes, there has been a small risk allowance being put in there, and we are definitely aware of contaminated land, but don't worry about the new pole that's been put there. That's completely different. Um, it, it, it's to the side of the new, new approach. Cool. Um, that brings us to the end of our question time. Um, if you did have a question uh, in the chat or sent via email um, and it didn't get answered, don't worry, we will definitely get to it. Um, like I said, we'll be sending out a Q&A document after the webinar. It's likely to be early next week. Um, if you do have any other questions, then please feel free to send those through to our email address. So you can send those through to letstalk at ccc.govt.nz um, and we'll endeavour to answer those as well. Um, so I just wanted to um, thank everyone again for taking time out of their busy day to, to join us for this webinar and learn a bit more about this project. Um, it's really important that we hear from from everyone around what they think about this project. So please do jump online um, and, and provide us with your thoughts there. Um, sorry, if you just go back to that. Yeah. Um, so we will, um, yeah, we will be uh, open for submissions until the uh, 28th of August, um, and you can find that information at letstalk.ccc.govt.nz forward slash Pages Road Bridge. Um, if you've got any feedback on the session, uh, or you have any more questions or comments, um, or you'd like to get in touch with the project team, um, then then please uh, get in touch with us. The details will be on the next slide. Um, yeah, we'll be in touch uh, over the next few days uh, with answers to your questions and links to watch the session. So um, on behalf of myself and all our team, uh, thank you very much for joining us tonight and enjoy the rest of your evening. Tēnā koutou katoa.